Hey there everybody, Jack Barnwell here in beautiful Southwest Florida and we have an incredible treat for you all today. We are on site at a really, really special, beautiful, beautiful property on the southern point of Marco Island. And uh, it's, a, it's a really incredible property, but we're planting up a bunch of pots. So we're gonna do some planting with you all, show you through this property, and uh, maybe we'll even see some dolphins jumping out back. So let's dive in. All right, so this particular client is really special. Um, they've been a client of C3 Gardens from the very beginning when we first started the company. And, uh, and we really love planting this place up and making it beautiful. Um, she loves her color and her orchids and all of her lush tropicals and stuff. So we always make this one extra special. Um, but as we dive into the property here, uh, I just rolled up and I'm noticing the property itself looks so, so tight. My good buddy Dan and his crew take care of the lawn and the landscape here, and they just do an exceptional job. I right away noticed the super crisp, tight, tight edge on this zoysia lawn and how nice that looks. It looks like they have to come through and just freshen up and turn the mulch over a little bit for season, but a lot of the shrubs and plant material here is just looking really, really good and healthy. Uh, these are ruby cordylines, which we love and we use a lot in our, um, in our pots and planters, and they're just doing great in the landscape as well. And uh, just all in all, everything's looking pretty darn sharp. And right over here by the front door, We've got a handful of different pots that are getting planted up and laid out here. And all of these are getting planted up for the full on deep shade. And we're talking deep tropical shade. So we've got some really fun, funky foliage, bromeliad here with some really, really bright color there. And uh, love it that this twisted money tree is our big thriller in the back of this pot. And this pot itself has so much color and texture going on with that mosaic tile finish. This is a really fun pot to plant every single year. So we've got a couple little pockets remaining there and I've got a whole bunch of different plants here. But uh, what do you all think? Should I use the calathea? Yes, you think I should? Oh, great. So I love the variegated funky foliage on these, but also that purple underside. These do really well for us in the shade down here. So I'm gonna tuck that guy in and kind of shoot him out there so he just sort of comes out through the bromeliad there and everything. And then in the center, I've got room for a really nice orchid. And with all these orchids, what we do is we can pop that out. Orchids are an air plant, so this is just growing in this really dense kind of mossy product here. And I'm just gonna like quarter of the way set him in there and then I'm going to take this stake that it's growing on here and push that down into the soil a little ways to anchor that in a bit and that orchid looks awesome and funky there and all this stuff is going to fill in and be gorgeous around it so fun fun stuff we'll probably weave in some little teeny thin little fairy lights in there so it'll glow in this entryway um, and really look nice. So all these little different planters kind of dot into this entryway and we'll do it all up for Christmas with some poinsettias and Christmas decor and all that. But, so the rest of the crew is planting even more pots and stuff out back. So let's join and uh, follow up with them, see what they got going on and see if we can see any dolphins or any really cool bird life or anything on the ocean side of this gorgeous, gorgeous property. All right, so here we just snuck up on the team, planting away at some of these pots. We're planting up a lot of these planters on the side of the house to kind of make our mess here. It's really easy to clean up and then we'll just dolly them into position. 
Um, so these guys are planting up some really nice tropical combos here with some gorgeous bromeliad texture there. Um, it looks like you need a little more soil in here. Bring all those crowns up and really display that more soil. This one's looking really good. And again, those will be super nice and full and looking gorgeous as we dolly them out into position. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five new planters getting done up right here. And as we come back into the water side of this property, plant I really, really love, I did want to point out, is this wart fern. I know it's got a nasty, nasty name, but I love this plant as a ground cover. That's as high as it gets. It does spread and, and thicken up underneath this beautiful gumbo limbo tree. But look at how healthy and gorgeous that is. Really no maintenance at all. As many of you know, I'm a huge fan of ground covers and that's a great, great plant for that spot. Gorgeous, lush, tropical landscaping around the pool, right on the ocean. I can't say enough about how absolutely stunning this property is here around the fire pit, relaxing, beautiful lighting, yada, yada, yada. But some of those pots that the gang there was planting up are gonna be coming back here and they're dotted around this space for some color and some new, you know, beautiful seasonal life and love. And then here we are right on the water. So like I said earlier, this is the southern tip of Marco Island. We are looking south and the only thing south as far as you can see is 10,000 islands, the Everglades, and way, way down there, a long way south is Key West. So this is, there's nothing between us and Key West and the Caribbean. The tide is coming in through this channel right now and this little island out there is shrinking rapidly from when we got here a little bit ago to now it is you know half the size so the tide is coming in which means that a lot of little fishies and stuff like that will be coming in and the dolphins will be coming in chasing them and every time we're working here planting and stuff in the back we always always have dolphins that visit us and come and play around and stuff right right here off of this property and it is so cool to see them so hopefully we can catch some dolphins out there and we'll include them in this video because it's so fun to see them right there. Um, so up here on the pool side, we've got some huge, big, massive bowls. These big, beautiful bowls, we plant these right in place because they're so, so big. And we're gonna plant up uh, three of these really, really cool diplodenias. And this is a vine that's gonna climb up and get all up into some height on this obelisk we're gonna put in the center of these big beautiful bowls. We're gonna put this Kalarama, which is an awesome Dracaena. We're gonna put that right in the center for some spiky, pink, cool, funky foliage shooting out through the obelisk. And then we've got plenty of annual color that's gonna fill this out and spill out the sides. So I'm gonna get set up here and I'll plant this with you all right now. All right, so we are all set up to plant up these two beautiful bowls here. And I started by putting in an obelisk right into the, uh, right into the planter. And I've been on a major obelisk kick recently and I just love it. Uh, I love growing vines up them. I love the height and the structure that it puts into a planter. So I'm not using them everywhere, don't worry. I'm not going crazy with them, but uh, but it is kind of my thing right now, so we'll see where it leads. But the reason I put this obelisk in these is um, we are going to feature three of these white diplodenia in this planter. And these guys will vine. They're gonna spill out a little bit, but we can easily train them up onto 
the uh, obelisk. So I'm gonna do like a triangular sort of layout of those white diplodinia. And that's gonna be super, super pretty to see those running up and trained onto this obelisk. Then like I said earlier, I'm gonna put this really cool Colorama Dracaena right in the center. And that guy, it is gonna to wanna to get taller, but we can keep it trimmed back pretty easily and it just keeps kind of splitting off with new shoots. And this pinky wild foliage with those diplodinia vines all over this, you know, shooting through, I think is gonna be a really, really awesome centerpiece for these huge, huge bowls. Then up in and playing with that Colorama, I'm gonna use some of this really incredible Dianthus. Look at that big, beautiful color. This particular variety is called Jolt, and, uh, and it does really well for us in the full sun down here. So I'm gonna put those jolts up in toward the back there um, and up against that colorama. And as you can see, I'm planting these in. You know, I'm just barely tickling those roots a little bit. You don't wanna rip at those roots much at all. They're very, very fine little spider web roots. And I really don't want to just rip half of this off because it'll really throw this plant into some shock. So just a little bit of tickle. We get it down into our, our uh, soil there. We've got a lot of nice slow release fertilizer and everything in that soil. And these things are gonna just boost out. So in addition to those, we're gonna do some of this gorgeous blue scavola also known as wind flower. You can see I've got quite a bit of it here because I'm doing two of these bowls. But that wind flower is gonna go right in front of that dianthus. I'm gonna spill that out right off the edge there. Boom, tucking those in. Whoppa, whoppa. And again, these are in gallons. I gotta be careful because I'm standing right on the edge of this. Lanai, don't want to fall off and embarrass myself on TV. But look at that color, I love that combo, how this is coming together. I still have some pockets here and here. So um, what I've got preserved for that, I wanted to get a little bit of different foliage in here and tuck some of these little liriope in here again in a triangular pattern just to get that texture and that flowiness of this liriope. These are a nice little flowing kind of plant. It's not gonna flower for us in this planting because they only flower really in the summertime down here and this is a winter planting, but it'll give us some awesome texture and foliage kind of spilling and flowing out of the pot, which I really do like for this planting. And then for my final element, I'm gonna go with this Cetcresia, also known as Purple Queen, which is gonna be a really beautiful, it's a very vigorous plant. It'll spill and arc out and fill these pots out um, along that border really, really nicely. And I've got enough room, looks like, for one, two, three, of those as well. So working in a lot of threes to go round and round and round we go. This guy is nice and full. Because I'm working right here by the pool, I'm trying to be as careful and clean as I can. So I brought my little battery powered blower. We use these a ton. And I'm gonna just keep all that soil and everything blown right off so that I'm not tracking or blowing any of that soil into the pool. Try and respect the uh, pool guys. They gotta come and keep that clean and nice. And then this guy is ready for its final element. We put beautiful Spanish moss, which is a living plant. We get live 
gorgeous Spanish moss. We buy this stuff in bulk and I'm going to tear and tuck that all in up under and around and I'm kind of using it as like mulch more or less for my planter. Um, but where it is in the in the air and it's getting a little sunlight it's gonna it will live and it'll trail a little bit with that gorgeous silvery foliage but it also kind of helps to keep moisture in and it really just makes the whole planter look a lot more finished and uh, and just a really gorgeous kind of presentation you know right off the bat so I'll finish mossing that out this guy will get watered in we also will spray it a little bit with a leaf shine product to make sure all these green glossy leaves look absolutely stunning and it'll be a beautiful presentation when the owners come home a little later this evening they're going to see all this planted up and hopefully they're going to absolutely love it i know they will anyway i'm going to go check in on the rest of the crew see how everybody's doing on the rest of the property and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of sunshine here in the beautiful tropical south florida sunshine We'll see y'all in the next video. Be sure to subscribe, click that bell and everything like that because we'd love to keep the content coming to you so you can see all the beautiful blooming things happening in our world as we share them with you in yours. Cheers. Wait, 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 before you go, I did want to show you guys one more plant on this property that I really do love that's worth introducing to you all. This is kind of our southern hydrangea. So when I'm down here in Naples and I'm missing my hydrangeas of the north, I get to play with Dombea. And Dombea is a really, really great plant, a similar kind of habit to hydrangeas. They like a little dappled sun as we're getting here in the afternoon under these palm fronds and such. And, uh, and they pretty well flower, you know, for most of the winter season, which is really, really cool. The bees absolutely love them. And they've got that nice, big, heart-shaped leaf that's really cool that I love and they're pretty sweet so they're a nice soft green mounded flowerful shrub that doesn't really get too big they can get you know in the 8 to 10 foot range I've seen them that big but for the most part they hang in like the 4 to 6 foot range like this one and that's an awesome awesome size to uh, to have for a Dombea so anyway you got to be careful because the bees like them too but thought we'd introduce you guys to that shrub before we say goodbye. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Cheers.